In this mini tutorial, we're going to look at the basics of the visual pathway, uh, and we're going to use the condition of bitemporal hemianopia um, to illustrate this. So, the first thing I want to do is draw your attention to the two images we've got on the right hand side. Um, the top image, um, what I'm using this for, is to represent what the patient sees. Okay, this is what we see. This is our entire visual field, the, the binocular visual field, all of what we see. Okay, and we're going to simulate what some of these field defects look like with reference to this image. The lower image here is a transverse MRI scan. Um, it's a T1 weighted MRI scan if you're interested, um, going straight through the center of the eyeballs. So here are the eyeballs here, and just at the front you can see the lenses of the eyes there. Uh, this is important because this is gonna help to explain um, how we relate visual fields to parts of the retina. Now, to orientate ourselves and to be entirely um, accurate about which side is which, I'm gonna label these. So this is the left side, and this is the right side. Now, I want to just give you um, a warning, um, which some of you will already have picked up. Left and right is not the same, not the usual convention we use for the MRI scan. As you know, conventionally, um, we're referring to the left side of the head on this side of the scan, and the right side of the head on this side of the scan. However, I flipped this um, for reasons which should become obvious to you in a few minutes' time. So please be aware that left and right have been flipped um, with respect to the MRI scan. We're now dealing with what the, world's, what the world looks like, i.e. what the left side of the world looks like and what the right side of the world looks like. And we're pretending that this head scan is in fact you or the patient looking out at the scene of the little church that we've got there. Okay? Now, to, to build up um, this diagram, what we're first of all going to do is we're going to draw on the retina on the MRI scan, and we're going to draw on the nasal halves of the retina. Okay, So here is the nasal half of the left retina, and here is the nasal half of the right retina. Okay, And we're going to use blue okay, to represent the um, nasal half of the retina. And then we're going to use red to represent the temporal half of the retina. So here's the red temporal half of the retina there, and the red temporal half of the retina in the left eye. Okay. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how these halves of the retina relate to the actual visual fields. Uh, and the thing to realise, which I'm sure you've already um, being taught is that the fact that the eye is a pinhole camera with a pupil here means that it is the nasal retina which sees the temporal visual field and it is the temporal retina which sees the nasal visual field. Uh, but we're going to draw this out and um, so hopefully you'll, you'll get what I mean in a second. So here we're going to draw on a light ray which is going to go from the image onto the nasal half of the retina. And we're going to start at the retina, actually. So here's a light ray which, is going to, which has come from the image and has gone to the nasal half of the retina. And you'll note that it's gone through the lens and the pupil here. And because this is a pinhole camera, the eye is a pinhole camera, it's kind of flipped it around. Let's draw it on for the left eye. All right, so here's the left eye, the nasal retina going up to this part of the image here, okay? Now let's do the same for the temporal retinas. So here's the temporal retina through the lens to there, and here's the temporal retina through the lens to here. So what we can do is we can actually color in the image based upon which part of the retina is seeing it, okay? So in blue, let's draw on the part that's seen by the nasal retina, okay? So this region here is the part that's seen by the nasal retina of the right eye. <laughs> and this region here is the part that's seen by the nasal retina of the left eye. Then in red, we can draw 
in this large central area which is the area seen by the temporal retinae of both eyes okay so this is the area seen by the temporal halves of the retina okay and it's the central visual field All right so now that we've done this let's recap you can see in blue is the nasal retina and the temporal retina and you can see that the nasal retina sees the lateral most parts of the visual field okay so the nasal retina see the lateral most parts of the visual fields whereas the temporal retina here see the medial most parts of the visual field okay so central vision arises mostly from the temporal retina whereas more peripheral vision arises mostly from the nasal retina and this is a really important fact because it's down to this arrangement that we get the particular visual defect seen um, which is known as bitemporal hemianopia and what we're going to do next is actually try to draw out the visual pathway in order to illustrate this. So let's first of all draw on the eyeballs. So here is our um, left eyeball and here is our right eyeball. Now we'll draw on the optic nerves. Okay, so here are the optic nerves coming together at the optic chiasm. Like this, so there's the chiasm. Now we'll draw on the lateral geniculate nuclei. So here's the left lateral geniculate nucleus and the right lateral geniculate nucleus. And finally, we'll draw on the visual cortex. There's the visual cortices. And what we're going to do is we're going to split each retina into a nasal and a temporal half. Okay, And I'm going to use this dotted line to represent this division. So here is the nasal and temporal retina. Just to remind you, this would be the nasal retina and this would be the temporal retina. And you'll recall that the nasal retina sees the temporal visual field and the temporal retina sees the nasal visual field. Okay, so far, so good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw on some retinal ganglion cells and look at the trajectory of their axons. First of all, we're going to draw on some ganglion cells from the nasal retina. Okay, so here is the cell body of a retinal ganglion cell which lives in the nasal retina. It sends its axon through the optic nerves, past the chiasm, into the optic tracts and into the lateral geniculate nucleus, where it synapses upon a thalamic neuron, and then that thalamic neuron projects into the visual cortex. We can do the same thing here for the left eye. Here's a ganglion cell living in the nasal retina, okay? It sends its axon, as we said, through the optic nerve, through the chiasm, through the optic tracts, into the lateral geniculate, where it synapses upon a thalamic neuron, which projects to the visual cortex, okay? So there we've drawn two ganglion cells from the nasal retina. Now let's draw some ganglion cells from the temporal retina. Okay, so here in red is a ganglion cell that lives in the temporal retina. Um, temporal um, cells do not cross over, they remain ipsilateral, so here it goes, it's ipsilateral. Synapses on a thalamic neuron, which then projects to the visual cortex. Here's another one from the temporal retina, sends its axon down through the optic nerves, chiasm, optic tract onto a thalamic neuron which projects to the visual cortex. All right. Now, if we're thinking about bitemporal hemianopia, we're thinking maybe about a pituitary adenoma, something like that, which is growing and compressing the decussating axons of the optic chiasm. So here is our pituitary tumour in green, compressing the decussating axons at the chiasm. Um, and you'll notice that it's compressing a particular population of axons. Okay, so these axons which we're compressing with our tumour are the ones which we've coloured blue. And these are axons from the ganglion cells which supply the 
nasal retiny. Okay. Now the nasal retiny, we can see in our head scan here, here are the nasal retiny in blue. And you can see that the nasal retiny see the more peripheral parts of the visual field. Okay. So when we've got our um, lesion there at the chiasm, what we lose um, is this region in green on the image. Okay, so what we lose is this. The, the tumour in this case has obliterated this part of the visual field. All right, on both sides. So therefore, all that we are left with is this central part of the visual field. And that is why occasionally you might read about bitemporal hemianopia being described as tunnel vision because we've lost the peripheral parts of um, our visual fields but preserved the central parts. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense.